We are live in 3, 2, 1, start the recording. Hello everyone, California Mackie here and welcome to Chest of Blades and hold on. Oh god, that music is so... Mwah. You guys get a 10 out of 10 from me already. Fuck it. Chest of Blades is a game by Argent Games and it is... It is a medieval... Ro it is a re medieval romance, I believe. Which is probably best for my taste. Let us begin. Hold on, the music is so sexy, it gave me the chills. Calm down. My hair is perfect? It has to be. I spent four hours grooming it myself, that's excessive. Earlier. Oh gods, gods help me. Now is it the time to get stage right? Come on, pull yourself together. I take great pleasure in presenting oh, the voice our acting. next guest. Straighten up, look presentable, smile. The sole heir of our beloved Lord and Lady Varison. Deep breaths, deep breaths. I'm hyperventilating, deep breaths. <laughs> Rivian Varison. This game has a great charm already and it's just a few seconds in. I'm absorbed. Riri Ridian? I'm sorry, I didn't get this look at it really well. Damn it! I bet they're going to laugh at my hair. I went for the Bishonen hairstyle. So gone already, laugh, stupid bloody puffed up nobles. Oh, he's so cute! Yeah, this has this. The only issue this game has is that it won't run that well with my hardware, but it still runs and I am approving of it. There was a warning at the beginning so, too, so A plus for that. A plus. Why can't you be an upstanding son like that? You're a shame to this family. Wow, you even got the voice actors for, ex for the extras. What a charming young man! <laughs> you must introduce yourself to him after this period, huh? He's Varison's boy. Hmm, I should speak with him later. What kind of voice was that? <laughs> also, could we go back? Nope. Oh, it's just history. Never mind. Oh no, this is sad. I forgot. I did read. Where do I go now that I'm here? There's no protocol for this, is there? I just want to go home. <laughs> Mommy! Daddy! Oh wait, they're dead! Sir, <laughs> I have been requested to bring you upstairs when you arrive. <sighs> oh, Rivian. And then there's a sharply dressed man. A servant suddenly approaches my side, bending forward slightly in a bow. He's gonna bend forward soon and I never mind. I'm I'm sure this isn't that kind of game, I need to right shut up. Person? Yes, sir. You are Sir Rivian, are you not? I give him a suspicious nod. Am I about to be wheedled into some marriage proposal? Excellent. This way, oh, sir. Oh, my parents are still alive. Don't worry, it's fine. Everything's right. fine. Oh my god, that's some... S that's some... Uh, that's some Sarah hair from Final Fantasy. Holy shit. <laughs> I styled it myself, it took me four hours! <laughs> I fall into step behind the well-dressed servant, gazing all around me as I go. It's even more so spectacular than I thought it'd be. So many people in so many lavish outfits. The cost of the woman's dresses probably outweighs her our whole kingdom's treasury. Also, is it just my imagination or are people staring at me? Is my hair that bad? I really thought it'd be done properly. Come introduce yourself later, darling. <sighs> Who was that? <laughs> Thanks, but I'll have to pass. Ugh. You see, no, I'm not into vaginas. Here we are, sir. The servant stops after we ascend the stairs, leading to the overall overlooking balcony. Turning around to face me, I appreciate it, but um, why did you take me here again? Yes, why did you take me here? So you can bend forwards from in front of me. Yes. 
as the butler of Princess Matur Park. Rib! Fly. Over here! <gasps> is that whose voice I think it is? No, that's impossible! The gentleman who requested you is over there, sir. Please enjoy the rest of your evening. I really like how this game zooms in on areas so that it adds an effect of value in the scene where you can investigate each detail in the scene. That is... As a... As a visual novel connoisseur that is very... That is going well and beyond the limits of Ren... Well, playing within the limits of Ren I don't know, I'm just... Look, I've been ma I've been pl toying with game design programs for you. three, four years without coming up with anything. The fact that someone came up with something is a miracle. But before I can turn her back around, a firm tug pulls Brilliant. at my arm. I know you remember me. It's only been four years. Just, Just about as much time as I tried starting that game and never completed. Oh, hello, redhead. Although that is a deep crimson. Did you die but blood? The family face of an ancient. Is there gonna be vampires? I hope. Not. I don't know. It's a chest of blades. You never know what's gonna happen. The familiar face of an energetic young man appears in oh, front of me. I remember you, all right, Arden. Hey, hey! I swear, if his last name is Gray, I'm gonna punch the devs. Arden Gray is my character. Although I've never posted them anyway, and the gate name is pretty common, I guess. Ugh. So many people are named Arden. Damn it! Can't you look a little happier to see your old friend? You have the expression that of a man of a funeral text. Holy shit, dance. that is... This... You have the expression of a man of a funeral, not of the dance. I love the characterization already. With a sulky frown, he nudges my shoulder with a hand. I'd forgotten that this man doesn't know the phrase, personal space. How did you know I'd be here? No. More importantly, why are I you I love the here? accents. Weren't you serving in the king's army? I was, yes. Until I was promoted to serving in his royal guard. <laughs> royal Oh, wow. The voice acting is really good. I can't shut up because I am so impressed right now. His over-enthusiasm incites me in a strong desire to punch him! I'm getting excited. You only get- You only got the job because of your father- Because your father's a duke, you bastard! Mm, I'm so proud of you. Shouldn't you be on duty rather than frolicking around then? He doesn't need his whole Ooh, force Ooh, this guy is sassy, Rivy! I was given permission to attend as a guest. Oh, right. <laughs> I forgot that this damn celebration lasts five whole days. How am I going to make it back alive? Did Lord and Lady Varison not come with you? You look a little lost and alone. But piss off! I'm just not used to being around <laughs> so many noisy people at once, that's all. <laughs> the last thing I want him to know is that it's the first grand event I've attended myself. I'd never heard the end of this I, I... I'd never hear the end of his ridiculous teasing. Going back to my previous question, how on earth did you know that I'd be coming to the party? Party, of course. You're the new center of attention, that's why. Oh, uh, I, lo I love the inflections too. Who, who did you guys get as voice actors? They're professional. Everyone loved and respected your father so much when he worked as the king's chief general and strategist. It's only natural his newly marriageable son catches the public eye. He winks and gives me a pointed nudge. It's people like you who make me want to wear spikes on my clothing, Arden. As we talk, I notice the crowd is starting to gravitate towards the large ballroom doors in the main floor below. I'm becoming very br regal here. I'm very becoming very period-esque. I guess it means it's about time for that. Ah, the thought makes me feel slightly nauseated. In that case, I should extract myself before I get dragged into anything. Well, there'll be plenty of time for well, us to catch up later. Well, there'll be plenty of time for In us to catch up later. In the meantime, are where are they the keeping wine? the wine? Oh, well, it's over by the terrace doors. But the dance Sorry. scene's about to start, you know. Aren't you coming?
I like how they both say no. Which one's... Which Do I go sassy or politely? I'll be sassy. I like sassy. Maybe. Ignoring audience eager gaze, I shudder and quickly shake my head. There's one thing right now I absolutely do not want to do, and that's prancing around in the damn ballroom. Hold on, let's try to save features. I feel like they could have done more with this, but this is good. This is a lot of customization. Holy crap, that is gorgeous. <laughs> Alright, I'll be right back, guys. I'll just need to check on something real quick. Sorry about the delay, guys. Let's get back to the show. Boop. Ignoring audience eager gaze, I shudder and quickly shake my head. There's one thing right now I absolutely do not want to do, and that's prancing around in the damn ballroom. Uh, no, I need to be thoroughly no, I need to be thorough. before I can even tolerate the idea of dancing, you see. I wish you the best of luck, though. Tear up that ballroom floor in my honor. Riv, wait! I walk away with a huff. Before he can grab a hold of my arm again, I quickly retreat and make a beeline for the wine table. There's a wine table on the second floor, but I soon get immersed in the crowd heading in the opposite direction, and a sea of lacy dresses surrounds me in a fury of fluttering. Bloody hell, how can there be so many people in one place? Come dance with me, darling. <gasps> Is that Miss Yuri from sorry. Camp Buddy? Sorry. I already have a date, sorry. <laughs> Somehow I managed to evade the overly aggressive woman from earlier, her lips twisting into a sour pout after I de hastily declined. You know, this... This game is all me. The crowd thins out as most of them head down to grand staircases, and I finally worm my way over to the terrace doors. Phew. Oh, what I wouldn't give to be at home right now, curled in my warm bed, bed with a book. I still can't believe father and mother sent me all the way out here by myself. They know I don't do well at parties, so they send me to a five-night extravaganza of extravagance. Cruel, cruel parents. <sighs> at least you're here for me, my sweet ambrosia. This could do with a cutscene, actually. Sighing gratefully, I pick up a glass that's already filled with dark red liquid. I am feeling the fantasy here. I was never allowed to drink much when I was when I attended balls with my family, so I'll be damned if I don't make the most of this. Oh, here we are. The grand celebration of the king's birthday. Almost a full week of parties, dancing, games. I even heard there's a festival. Out here in the mountains, the royal family's retreat is more of a miniature town than anything. There's shops, market stalls, temporary houses in a jousting arena, all set up for this occasion alone. I'm glad I'm recording, holy crap. I needed to double check. And of course, there's the picturesque castle walls here. We're in right now. Only a fraction of the size of the actual castle in the cap capital city, but still magnificent. I'm feeling it. Yeah, recording has its holy shit. I keep worrying that I break the recording, guys. It's happened before. Still, it took five days to travel here by carriage. Why the hell does it have to be so remote? I feel like I'm in some kind of secluded prison or something, even if it's an admittedly lavish one. What have I gotten myself into? You know the... the soundtrack for this game? Amazing! Taking a long drink of my saving grace, I head over to the balcony railing to gaze down at the emptied floor below. It looks a lot different now that almost all the guests have gone into the ballroom. I can hear the muffled sound of music from behind the grand doors. 
I think I'll just make myself inconspicuous until we're shown to our rooms and maybe just hide under the covers for the next few days. Yo, that whispering. Mm -hmm. Is someone whispering? I turn my head sharply to reach this to search for the source of the noise, but I can't see anyone. Most peculiar. Are they on the terrace? I whirl around in an attempt to catch the whispers off guard, but no one's there. <laughs> Probably just some young comp couple exchanging dirty lines under their breath. I wish they weren't acting so eerily stealthy about it, though. Is something the matter, sir? Yeah. You know, you really sound older than you should, than you look like, Mr. Servant. The servant suddenly standing beside me again. Speaking of eerily stealthy, how did he sneak up on me like that? <clears throat> no, nothing's the matter. <laughs> just enjoying some private enjoying time, some private with, time my with my boo. <laughs> I motion to my wine and offer a firm nod. I see. May I ask if you managed to meet with Sir Arden? He was very excited about seeing you. Ah, uh, yes. I met up with him, all right. <laughs> the emotions are so good. If I may be so bold, you do not seem overly thrilled with the prospect of his company. Pursing my lips hesitantly, I tap a fingernail against the glass in my hand. It's a little more complicated than that, but I don't particularly want to discuss the details. Of course. I apologize for intruding on your private affairs. However... Sir Arden pulled me aside again and requested you join him in the ballroom. Well, I'm not joining him in the damn ballroom. He can find someone else to bother. The vehemence... The vehemency of my reply makes the servant blink in surprise, and I immediately feel a little sheepish for my outburst. Well, his majesty at least would not wish you to dance if you did not want to. I am certain. You're damn right. I clear my throat, nodding a little awkwardly in reply. I suppose I really shouldn't snap at this poor butler, considering it's not his fault Arden's an insufferable louse. How long does the dance last, out of curiosity? Well, this is already the second dance of the night, my lord. His majesty enjoys letting his noble guests have time to mingle and refresh themselves in between. The schedule of festivities for the remaining day shall be announced after this dance, I believe. The schedule, huh? <laughs> I suppose I should be present to hear that at least. My musings are rewarded with a nod of agreement by the servant. What's your name, anyway? This is already the second time I've seen you, and I'm sure it won't be the last time if I'm here for... five days. I just love that detail, holy crap. Looking a little pleasantly surprised at my question, the man tilts his head slightly. Guests do not usually inquire after the names of servants, but I am called Silas, sir. sir. Well, uh, Silas, anyway, I might be able to convince you to lead me to my room after the schedule announcement. Oh, ho, 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 ho. already! I offer him my most winning smile. Uh, no, no, I didn't mean anything like that. I just wanted to turn any- Well, regardless of your intention, sir, I am not supposed to leave the main hall until instructed. Oh, that's a Fine. damn shame. I <laughs> like how there was a blush. You never fail to impress with your social skills, Rivian. Like a greased elephant skating on ice. Before I can skulk away to the ballroom to hide my shame, a high-pitched voice suddenly peals in the air with elephant stomping. Oh. A moment later, a moment later, a little girl comes running up beside Silas. She's probably not older than ten and cute as a button, but I can tell from her outfit that she's not a nobleman's child. Something about her reminds me of someone, but I can't put my finger on who. Hello, Hazel. Is something the matter? I don't like staying in the kitchens by myself. It's so dark, and I always feel like someone's watching me. 
You and I too, girl, you and I. Clinging onto Silas's sleeve, she turns her large eyes in my direction. I can't blame you. Ever since I almost caught on fire during a visit to our manor's cook, I never liked kitchens either. <laughs> she giggles a little, rocking on her toes. Well, at least I can make conversation with little girls. Wait, that's not something to be proud of! I'm afraid I have to stay here, Hazel. Wasn't your mother supposed to be there with you? She said she had to leave for a little while, but I had to stay put in the kitchen. I want to go see the pretty ladies and gentlemen dancing. I wish I could be as enthusiastic as you about it. He grimaces, probably being torn in half by the puppy dog eyes and his sense of duty. I am very sorry, but the young gentleman here is free to enter the ballroom, you know. He might be willing to take you. Oh, you conniving bastard. The hint of a smirk on his lips makes me wonder if he hadn't planned this from the start. Really? Would you take me, sir? Please, sir! Would you take me? Well, I'd rather not become a permanent villain in this child's mind, so I guess there's no helping it. Shooting a venomous glare at Silas's beaming face, I shove my half-empty glass at him to hold, grab Hazel's hand, and stalk glumly towards the stairs. The little girl goes quiet, but her sparkling eyes are full of eagerness. We head down to the lower floor, and I lead Hazel over to the huge ballroom doors. From inside, the sound of a fast-paced waltz mingled with the many footsteps and peals of laughter reaching my ears. And peals of laughter reaches my ears. Let's just take a little peek, okay? Hazel enthusiastically nods in reply, so I reach out to pull open one of the doors slightly. It's in full swing. Where's the music? Oh, there it is. The dazzling shimmer of numerous whirling dresses first greets my eyes, all but blinding. A sea of colorful, elegant figures swirls across the gleaming floor, waltzing in time with the upbeat music. The light from the chandelier sparkles and glimmers, and moonbeams faintly stream in from the windows on the side. I can't help but watch the guests' graceful movements for a few moments, admiring both the statuesque men and the beautifully clad women. They make it look awfully pretty, I have to say. I suppose dancing isn't a bad thing to spectate. Still, there's no way I'd ever enjoy being out there on the floor. Have you ever danced before, Hazel? Still watching through the wide crack in the door, I wait for the expected eager, eager reply. Hazel? She's gone. That little brat, she might get in trouble. While my first is, is instinct is to be annoyed, I admit I'm a bit worried about what will happen to the girl if she's found somewhere where she's not supposed to be. At an official event, a servant's daughter frolicking around in the ballroom is something that would probably warrant punishment for both the girl and her parents. Hazel certainly deserves a stern talking to, but I don't want her to get in trouble. She'd definitely cry. Ugh. I'm getting too soft. This is the last damn time I um, ever play babysitter. I love that muttering. Holy shit, that's so good. Rivian, a voice actor, whoever you are, you are grand picturesque petit. Uh, no, I, I forgot the name. Uh, Clem de la Clem. I hastily search for Silas. Silas in the balcony above, but he's nowhere to be seen. What a bastard of a butler. Shoving the responsibility for looking after her on me. She, he's definitely one hell of a butler. <laughs> Girl, have you, are, are your eyes okay? I'm right here. I'm right here. You're the, you're, are, you, are your eyes okay, girl? Sighing, I reluctantly step inside the ballroom, managing to avoid any undue attention by sticking to the corners. More than half of the guests are engaged in lively waltz with everyone else admiring chatting from their sides. 
No, Hazel over there, or over there. Where on earth did she run off to? Oh, is that who I think it is? Come to dance with me after all. With your cross eyes? No, I'm not. Oh no. This couldn't possibly get, be get any worse. N no, I'm just here to watch, you see. She's coming towards me at an alarming speed. Escape route, escape route. Where the hell can I go? Uh, excuse me, miss. I have to take him from you for a moment, I'm afraid. Just before the woman reaches out to me, a familiar shape steps in between us. Oh, what a shame. Do come back soon. I'm crossed between who I want to dance with then. Do I want to dance with this bastard or do I want to dance with that elf that was charging towards me like a rampaging bull? I'm at a complete loss for words. Yes, over I wish to overwrite my save. What else do you want of uh, you insignificant car? And I am getting too much into this. Oh. No matter. Arden? Arden, what the hell are you doing here? Come with me over here for a moment if you would, my friend. Oh, don't tell me you're related to Hazel. Baffled but relieved, I let Arden drape his arm around my shoulders and guide me into the direction of a relatively quiet corner. I didn't want to run into him either, but if I had to choose the lesser of two evils, I'd probably it'd probably be Arden. Thanks for that, I suppose. I let out a low mutter while we talk, trying not to sound too overly grateful so Arden doesn't take it as a cue to latch onto me more. I did warn you, didn't I? Your being of marriageable age means you're bound to catch the eye of girls like that. But, more importantly, did you finally change your mind and decide to come dance? Don't spout drivel, Arden. I'm looking for a little girl. When we reach the corner, Arden pauses, casting me a curious, and maybe slightly suspicious, glance. A uh, little girl? Do you have a cousin or something I don't know about? Oh, it's complicated. Either way, I'm guessing you haven't seen her. Arden shakes his head and I let out a sigh. Well, it's not my problem, I guess. Hazel probably knows her way around here better than I do anyway. You have good timing, though. I think the announcement is about to begin. Oh, thank God, I skipped out on the oh, dancing. the schedule of festivities. Nodding, Arden points to the center of the ballroom floor where the numerous couples are starting to drift away in towards the corners, making way for a fancily dressed man in, with a scroll in his hands. The music dies down gradually and comes to a stop, and the chat diminishes to quiet whispers. Arden keeps his, alarming, uh, his arm hanging around my shoulders and I find myself too tired to bother with shooing him off. I wish someone would put their arms around me like that. Esteemed ladies and gentlemen of the court. I really hope he keeps this short and sweet. Is anything in court affairs ever short and sweet? Good point, Arden. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the first day of our gracious Royal Highness's birthday celebration festivities. His Majesty wishes to thank you all for your attendance. Could you give us the rundown Why then? Why can't the summer? royal birthday boy come out and thank us himself? <gasps> oh, you sassy Rivian! Ah! Tomorrow will mark the beginning of the Spring Festival being held in His Majesty's honor. In the morning, the outdoor stores and shops shall open for you, and games shall be hosted for your enjoyment. Sorry guys, I had to leave for a quick bit because there was issues with someone trying to catch me while playing. <laughs> Tomorrow will mark the beginning of the Spring Festival being led blah 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 blah. The festival we shall continue, shall continue for, three for three days. Three days. Afterwards. Afterwards, on the fourth and final day of the royal celebration, there shall be a grand masquerade, which all guests are expected to attend. Bye, Felicia. I don't think you'll be able to get out of dancing in that one, Riv. <laughs> Thanks, Arden. Ugh. <laughs> oh my god, it's the Cassandra. Ugh. Oh, it's so, I just love that stuff. And if you guys were listening, his to royal my highness hopes his shit. gentle guests enjoy the rest of their time at the castle estate and looks forward to joining you in merriment. Keep dreaming. But yeah, if you you guys had my headphones, oh my god, it is crisp, uh, crisp, crystal clear. 
Now, guests who wish to retire for the night may adjourn to their rooms upstairs. Our gracious maestro has agreed to several more songs for those who would delight in a little more dancing. Hey, like I said, bye. As delicate applause fills the ballroom, I quickly pull away from Arden's grip and clear my throat. What on earth? Oh, that's, that's my cue, I'm afraid. Perhaps I'll see you in the morning. Perhaps I'll see you in the morning. Yes, okay, I think I can now do a narration by him. Perfect. Although absolutely dreadful. Leaving me? Again? You're so horribly mean. Oh, shut up. Shh. Abandoning Arden for the second time this evening, I give him a lazy half bow before turning towards the doors. One, I wonder if Silas is the one who's supposed to escort the small rooms. If so, he's going to get the chewing up he solely deserves. As some of the other guests and I return to the main hall, however, we're instead attended by a host of other servants I haven't seen before. Slightly disappointed not to have a chance to punch that butler's face, I follow along as we're led up another staircase to the second floor, where most of the guest accommodations would seem to be. Ooh, this is different. Who are you, mademoiselle? And this room is yours, sir. My thanks. My thanks. In the hallway, a polite maid opens the door to what are presumably my chambers for the duration of this celebration. She hands me the key before attending to the next guest, so I step inside the room and shut the door behind me with a sigh of relief. I like how they gave that seemingly extra character her own portrait. Finally, a moment to breathe. I'd forgotten how incredibly exhausting this whole socializing business was. Ugh. The room before me is a cozy one, illuminated by a few candelabras and the auburn flicker of the fireplace. The magnificently sized bed looks more than a little inviting, as do the plush chairs nearby. I could sleep on that couch! If I close my eyes and inhale the slightly smoky, dusty scent, I can practically envision myself back home. <sighs> you rich bitches. I wander over to the small doors at the back of the room, peering through the glass. Goodness, I ha I even have a little balcony of my own. I suppose the guest rooms were probably made with spoiled nobility in mind. Well, I wouldn't put past them. Pulling the doors open, I step out curiously into the elegant terrace, gazing up at the clear night sky. How many terraces would there be? To be honest, how many would there be? The wind ruffles through my hair, and I close my eyes for a moment to enjoy the cool sensation washing over me. Three days of a festival, and then a masquerade. Huh. As much as I hate to admit it, the festival sounds like it might be rather fun. My parents never felt obliged to take me to any festivals as a little boy, so I always had the sense that I was missing out whenever my friends would talk about them. <sighs> and that masquerade ball. I certainly wasn't informed by indeed a mask, that's for sure. Thanks, father. Perhaps I can buy one at the festival. I suppose if I'd have to choose any type of dance to partake in, a masquerade seems like the most interesting. Maybe a mask will even let me hide from Arden and that damned woman. The best of both worlds! <sighs> Smirking to myself, I idly glance over to my left, hearing a faint, shuffling noise. <gasps> what the? It's an adjoining balcony with the room next to me. And there's someone over there leaning against the balustrade. How the hell didn't I notice before? After my undignified yelp, the shadowy figure of the opposite side of the balcony turns slowly towards me. Oh! I feel the smolder coming on! Dear Lord! With the moonlight illuminating his features, I can identify that it's a man, for the slanted shape of his mouth is unmistakably male. My apologies, sir. I didn't realize uh, we were adjoined neighbors. <laughs> Neither have I, but I am not complaining. I can tell with those lips. Yes! 
Instead of an immediate reply, the man takes a slow step towards me, crossing the thin connecting walk walkway between our balconies. <laughs> really, there's no need to be angry, sir. I promise I wasn't. I swear, if he gives me the accent, I will flip it. Excuse my rudeness. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> right in my ears! <laughs> mm -hmm. Ooh -hoo -hoo -hoo. Hello, Ezio. How are you? <laughs> but seriously, holy shit! I know who I'm after. The tall, tan man bows slowly before me, lifting his head with a subtle glimmer in his eyes. I just had to be sure it was Lord Verison's son. I had the privilege of finally Why, meeting. you're willing to propose to me? I would definitely say yes to that. Holy mm -hmm. shit. But for- No, no, I'm not that kind of girl. I suppose we- I suppose we can go on a few dates. Mm -hmm. Unless you're a villain, in which case... Ooh. I don't know, I have a type. It's called bearded men with strong jaws and nice muscles. That's one of my types. It's not a criteria, but it's a preference. I feel bad for whoever I date who doesn't fit this bill, I swear to god. I would just be drooling over them and I- I still love you, it's just that look at him! I'm a terrible boyfriend material, that's all I'm saying. Oh, of course. Someone else who only identifies me as my father's son. I straighten up, feeling decidedly less deferential. Well, you're not mistaken. I prefer to be called Rivian rather than Varison's son, however. No need to be feisty, either. My apologies, Rivian. I already knew your name. But I didn't wish to seem rude by addressing you so... coarsely. <laughs> oh, you can coarse me whatever you want. <laughs> oh, well. I suppose that's alright, then. This man is surprisingly polite. Something about his manner and clothing makes me think he's from a different place. He's from Italy! It must be an act of fate that you were brought to me so soon. <gasps> you are precisely the one I have been looking right for. Right in my ears, God, please. Calm down. It's me? sending shivers. Are you sure you don't mean my father? He's not here if Guys, so. I really recommend you guys play this with earphones. Voice acting just makes you go, ooh. And the music is spectacular! He shakes his head, lips curling into a cryptic smirk. Who exactly is this man? He gives off much more dangerous air than your average courtier. <laughs> it's Ezio Auditore da Firenze! I wanted to give you a warning. Yes, sir, if it comes close to Italian, I, I will call will. shit. I knew it. You're sharp, I'm sure, with a man like Lord Verison as your father. So I doubt you'll take long to catch on. Who designs these characters? At first, in the other game, I was dating Colin Rutherford. Now I'm dating Etsy Auditore, great. What the hell are you talking- <gasps> Right there! Yeah! Before I can so much a struggle, I find myself abruptly turned about, pinned against the balustrade. That's the title card, pinned against the balustrade, staring down at the long fall of the cliff below. I cannot go back, what the fuck? We call this a rent Oh, there it is. You think this long celebration is just for the sake of the king's egoism? No. It's something far more than that. Why are you against my ears? What the hell? I can't take it. I'm getting... I'm getting the shivers in my neck. Holy crap. I'll hear you out. I mean, he's dangerously close. Oh my god, I had the mic backwards. What the fuck? But you guys could hear me anyway. I can feel my heart pounding in my chest, but... Strangely enough, I don't sense any killing intent from this man. Oh no, he's just got that penetrating stare. <laughs> and he's really gripping my waist. Oh. I suppose I can hear him out, just in case there's something important I don't know. Since when did diplomacy become so hands-on, though? For the love of the gods, yes! I glimpse a, ple a pleased mark on his face when I slowly relax in 
the cage of his arms. A sour grim is curling on my own. Who wrote this? I want to give you my money. Who wrote this? <laughs> you deserve a you deserve a raise. Yes. You see, the nobility here are not merely those from your own kingdom. Some of these lords and ladies hail from beyond these borders. Myself included. Well, that's pretty obvious, but... Oh yeah, good question. Um, I don't know how... How would I react in a situation like this? Because I'd probably freeze up, thus, you know, listen, hearing them out. And some of them are former citizens or allies of smaller nations whose armies were crushed under your kingdom's fists. So? Precisely what the hell does that have to do with me? Use your pretty head for a moment, little dove. The man who expertly controlled your forces' movements, who knew through spies everything his enemies would do, who outwitted them at every turn. The stranger's lips aren't far from my ear, and his warm breath tickles slightly against my skin. That was your father, Rivian. And now his darling son is far from home, in a nest of enemies among friends. So, who are you? A shiver runs down my spine as long, rough fingers tighten around my jaw. I already told you I'm not my father! No, but your leverage, to be fair. No. Hold on, let me try getting the guy's voice. No, but your leverage, to be fair. Yes, I can totally do it. <laughs> I'm still practicing. Your overshadowing bloodline may be irksome to you, but it is everything to those who hate Lord Varison. And you're so very vulnerable all alone. If I were one of those enemies, you'd be lying in a picturesque pool of your own blood right now, or smashed into little bitty pieces on those cliffs below. And neither of us want that, do we? I swear, if you were sent by my father, I mean, if you were sent by Rivian's father, I would be very, very... Actually, I don't know what to feel. I just want you to f take me over the ledge! <laughs> The low, soft, threatening voice of his vo tone of his voice makes my fingers tightly curl into fists, and I struggle desperately to not show my growing anxiety. Quit with your fancy words and tell me what the point of this all is. He's here to protect you. The point of it all? It's rather simple. A storm is brewing, Rivian. There are forces at work that seek to unravel this peaceful celebration into a diplomatic disaster. And I have a feeling things will turn bloody before. Can we have long. a dang can we have a medieval dang murder mystery? I would fucking love that. I don't know what this game is about. I didn't check enough on the Steam engine because I wanted to be I mean Steam platform because I wanted to be surprised and I'm of a strong fortitude most of the time. So I can handle this. And I do love surprises. Show me what you've got. He lets out a low laugh, releasing me from his embrace only to turn me around and press my back against the balustrade, staring me down at me with cool, glittering eyes. Mark my words. Something unpleasant is going to happen very soon within the walls of this fancy resort that all you pretty little nobles are trapped in. Murder mystery, please! I would say yes to that because, oh fuck. A lot of the visual novels that I played are either have uh need work need work with their side with their side entertainment or could focus on or are just restricted to one to two choices and I'm like give me five <laughs> that's a full pledge game if I ever thought but this is great this is great and you the heir of one of the kingdom's cleverest most ruthless men you will find yourself in the middle of it whether you like it or not I'm up for some intrigue Beads of cold sweat break out on the nape of my neck as those words sink into my skull. This is the absolute worst nightmare I could have imagined. Oh, sorry. Wrong one. There's... There's no way he could really be telling the truth. Right? Oh! Whether or not you inherited the sharpness of your father 
is something we'll all learn by the end of this celebration. Don't you think? I'm gonna have multiple saves. Thank God this game has multiple Based on if I make it to my carriage alive on the final day. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, now that looks cute. The stranger seems amused when I grind my teeth angrily, but he gives me a nod of confirmation. I'd like to ask how you know all this, but you're so full of cryptic drivel that I doubt I get a straight answer. So let me ask you instead. Damn it, I was trying to think of something that sounded cool and collected, but now I'm drawing a blank. What is your name? Shh. The man blinks. Well, if I wasn't expecting it, he probably wasn't expecting it either. Soon, though, a pleased expression drifts over his well-chiseled features, <laughs> lips curling in a wolfish grin. My name. It's Franz. Franz. Of Lord. At your service. I feel like I want to dissect the character, but then it could be just, you know, writer's discretion. He reaches out towards my hand, bringing the back of it to his lips. But I quickly pull away and give his chest a vehement, sh vehement shove, dodging out of his grasp. You should be the one to fall off the balcony, perverted bastard. I promise you won't be missed. No, I miss you. Fran's lips pursed together mockingly, a theatrical sigh making his broad chest rise and fall. The least you could do is thank me. But I guess the angry kitten act is just your unique way of showing gratitude. I'll be returning to my own room then. Unless you're planning on inviting me inside your Yes, please. I'd sooner invite in one of these purported assassins who want to leave me in a picturesque pool of my own To be blood. fair, he does give that vibe off. Fucking Ezio Auditor vibes. I swear, I play too many video games and have too many ships. I'm too passionate about my ships too. Stickering, he lifts his shoulders in an innocent shrug, turning to make his way back towards inside of his side of the balcony. Should you need my help, do seek me out. Oh, I will. I could use a little help on, the, on my rear end. But remember, I'm only one piece of the puzzle you may need to solve. His vague words are accompanied by a faint, unreadable glint in his eyes. If you're one piece of the puzzle, I'll just use you until all the other pieces are solved. If we're gonna be theatrical about this, with that he shoves his hands in his pockets and gracefully strides over towards his room's door, and I glare at his back until it disappears. What the hell is happening with this damn place? You tell me. That was a lot! The warmth and sensation of Fran's fingers curled around my chin still lingers, making me shudder. Shudder. More unsettling, though, are the lasting fragments of the words he left behind. I hastily return inside my own chamber, slamming the balcony door shut and locking them, pulling the curtains over the glass. The last thing I want is to wake up with that crazy, handsy demon of a man staring in at me. My mind feels a little numb as I undress and throw my clothes to one side, drawing, crawling into the bed and curling up under the covers. I'd think that Franz was lying to me just for sport, but I can't really fathom why he'd want to do that to someone he doesn't even know. I could probably shake his words off under normal circumstances, but there have been a couple of things bothering me since earlier. That whispering I heard before. For some reason, the fact that I couldn't find a source of it made me feel strangely nervous. Then there's the fact that Hazel slipped off so suddenly. It seems strange that she wouldn't try to coax me to come with her inside the ballroom, unless she wanted to purposely evade me. But why? And now I'm neighbors with some perverted foreigner. It's hardly believable, but if he was really telling the truth, then am I actually in danger? But why? Father would have surely known who the other guest could be before he sent me here. In that case, was there a reason why he made me attend alone? Is this a sink or swim coming of age ritual for me? <sighs> Argent Games, who made whoever made your musical score deserves a raise. Give it to him. I pull my head from under the covers and gaze glumly at the ceiling. As much as I hate to admit it, I'd rather risk embarrassing myself by taking Francis' words seriously instead of ignoring him and ending up a bloody splatter. Swallowing, I slip out of from the bed to make sure my room's door's locked, pressing my ear to the wood just to see if anyone's lurking outside. But I don't hear anything except the fast beating of my own heart. 
I give up and return to the plush mattress crawling back under the sheets. We're going to have a long talk about this, father. When I make it back home, and I will make it back home, I'll give him a real piece of my mind. Until then, I'll make sure any would-be assassins learn to fear the name of... Rivian Varison. Intro sequence, yay! Argent Games presents... Oh! Chess of Blades. Jamie Hughes is Rivian. Arden Rainsford is... Isarfis is Arden Rainsford. Franz Chamon is Connor McKinley. Connor McKinley, why does that sound familiar? Brian Hoyle is Linnaeus Glacia. Oh, thank god I don't have to choose so many guys. I stand corrected. Oh great, we got barbarians. I like the cast. It's so varied. Although I wish my computer would run better. Cyrus and Alexi ever deserve a raise. <laughs> I'm just saying. But then this is pro probably project based. Anyway. Mizuyukiro. Me and. Fuck, this is great. <laughs> 